John chapter 1, verse 12 says, To as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God. That means without him, I am not yet what I am supposed to be. But if I will receive his call today, if I will accept his love and choose to receive and impart values that he's designed for us to live healthy, productive, loving, victorious lives in the midst of all adversity, then I become what God has created me to be, a representative of his love, of his family, of his nature, of him. The greatest honor a father could ever have is for his children to want to be just like him. Amen. That's a heavy responsibility that sets on our shoulders. Have I provided that kind of a, a life that they could look at and esteem and see the values and want to pass that on? I know many of us feel we've fallen short and we thank God for his grace. Amen. But you know inside, every one of us desire to be that father that our children could look at and say, I want to be like my dad. The world has gotten difficult, more difficult than any, any other day. Scripture says in the last days that it shall be very dark, very hard. It said there will be perilous times. So I understand if today we as fathers feel somewhat broken in on by the enemy. But I will say this, to all that are in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation. To them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after that flesh, that old way of thinking and that old life, but after the Spirit and say, Abba, Father, train me, teach me that I might train and teach my children and others as well. So you have hope today. The helmet of salvation, the hope of your salvation is one of that God has given you yet another chance, another day to be able to receive his love, to receive his goodness, to sense that our Heavenly Father has provided an example that I do want to follow. I do want to be an example of. No matter what troubles come my way to snag me up and snare me and keep me from being able to, to walk in those shoes, I know one thing. My Father has not changed. Amen. And my love for Him has not changed. And I desire to be just like Him. And I know that's the cry of all the fathers in here today. So today, I believe, is the day of salvation. We sung the song to open up service. Salvation is here because salvation lives in me. Our Father is salvation. Amen. Amen. He's the one that can save your soul. He's the one that can create a brand new child that will be with him for eternity. For without him, you cannot be part of his family. Today you need to receive your Heavenly Father's love. Receive what He has done for you that you might be able to live with Him forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you know, tomorrow's not promised. It's a lot of pressure on today. Yeah, we can walk out of these doors in another 15, 20 minutes and remain unchanged. Or we can walk out of these doors today going, today I have heard your voice, Lord. Amen. Today is a day of salvation. Mm -hmm. Today is a day that I can renew my faith and I can walk with you and know that I'm imparting your values to another generation. Mm -hmm. To be the father I've always desired to be, one that looks just like you. Okay. Yesterday's gone. Regrets are for the weak. For those that will not stand strong today and face what's ahead of them. I encourage you not to be consumed with regret of the past. God has never called you to look back. He said, he that looks back is not fit. He does not have strength to be able to go forward in my kingdom. Well, I'll tell you what, God wants you to walk with him in his kingdom today. Amen? Amen. God wants you to be able to experience his life and his joy. So it's not about looking back. It's about getting free 
And God has paid a price for you and me. Many of you know that. He offered up his very best, yes. his only son. Right. Amen. Talk about training and equipping your children. That brings a whole new meaning to that, doesn't it? He trained and equipped his son to show his love at all costs. And he laid down his life. And I'm humble. And I'm grateful. today if you receive his love if you receive the reality of what he's done for you you know that it has set you free from your sin Amen. you can Amen. never pay a price greater than what he has already paid he gave his very best his only son and when he paid that price it was to take away all that guilt and all that shame it was to allow you to be able to acknowledge I no longer want to do my will Lord I no longer want to live a life that's not empowered by the vision by the values by the precepts, the statutes, the standards that you hold for me, I want what you've got for me. That's called repentance. Amen. Repentance is saying, you know what, I don't care what mom and pa showed me. I don't care what Grammy and Grandpa showed me. I don't care what, you know, how Brother Joe does it down the street. I want how you do it, Lord. That's right. Amen. When you accept him and you accept his ways, you've accepted everything you need to be the person that becomes a son of God. You need to receive today. Receive is an action word. You need to make it real in your life. You need to, to grab a hold of his love today in a fresh way. If you've already dedicated your life to Christ and, and been saved, then I pray that you would rededicate your life again today. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, Romans 10, 13 says that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not just some, but all. And today, I don't care where we've come from. It's not about denominations. Where are denominations? Divisions. Amen? Amen. Is Christ Amen. divided? Yeah. God forbid. <clears throat> Is Christ divided? God forbid. I don't care what denomination you came from. That's a man-made thing. That's a denomination. That's a division. That's, that's something to bring separation, distinction. I'll tell you, today we celebrate the same Father, God of all. Amen. 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 And his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Right. And because of that, we are one. We are united. And so if you come from different backgrounds, that's fine. But we all owe the same gratitude and thankfulness to our Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Don't allow men's opinions to divide you any longer. Stand for what's right. Stand for what's true. He is our God. He is our Father. And He has saved us. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. So today, I want to give you an opportunity to pray with me. If you haven't had a chance to pray this in a while, that's fine. Today's the day of salvation. Amen. And you're getting your opportunity to pray. Because God would have us to pray. To give him thanks. To receive his love. That we might become fresh, renewed, re-energized. Maybe even, for the first time, born again into his kingdom as a child now. Born as a brand new child. He says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are now a new creature in Christ Jesus if you've never accepted Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. So I would ask if you've heard his voice today, if you've sensed the tugging of your father's love, to pray with me. With every head bow. Father, we thank you today, Lord. You are our Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, you taught us how to pray to our Heavenly Father. You said, our Father. Lord, not just my Father, but our Father, Lord. Our Father, because you love us so much, you are our Father. And Lord, I pray today that as we pray, we would connect with you as our Father that loves us. Not as a God that's ready to smite us or take vengeance or to punish us for all the wrong that we've done. Lord, you've already done that. Father, you took it out on your only Son. Lord, that we might be able to believe the price has been paid. And so today, I believe the price has been paid. I know there's nothing I could offer you. If we already explored the thought that all we could offer is thanks, Lord, then there's nothing I can offer. So today, I receive your love, Lord. I thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you, Lord, that as you paid that price, that you forever settled the debt. And now I can trust in you. And so I pray, Lord, all those that would pray with me today, that we would accept you, that we would choose you, and that we would walk with you from now on. And so, Lord, I thank you. And as surely as you came out of that grave, Lord, 
You showed us that death, hell, and the grave had no power over us. And so, Lord, you are now the firstborn among many brethren, and you've called us to become the sons of God, to walk with you in eternity. And so, Lord, I pray that faith would come alive today in our hearts. No, it isn't just about groveling in this earth, Lord, but it's about standing strong, standing tall, to be able to shine the light, to be able to show not only you, Father, your heavenly abode and your love for us, but, Lord, be able to pass it on to our children. Lord, that we would look just like you. And so today I thank you, Father, as our heart cries out, that it would cry out one thing. It would cry out, Abba, Father, we've been separated from you, Lord. We've been disconnected from you, Lord. We need you. We need to be connected to you once again, Lord. As surely as our children are tugging on our leg, they're, they're tugging on our hand, they're trying to get our attention, Lord. Surely today I pray, Lord, that we would get your attention. Lord, that you would be glorified in our thoughts and in our prayers now. We thank you, Father. I pray each man woman and child here that would pray that prayer this morning with all sincerity Lord that they would be refreshed renewed made alive in you in Christ in Jesus name I pray Amen, Amen. Amen. Thank you Amen Thank you Lord Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18 famous passage the armor of God well, let's look at it I'm excited about it because it's how he's equipped us to be able to endure, to be able to be successful in this generation. Paul says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He didn't say be weak. He says, today is a day that I as a man can stand strong after I've received my father's love and I'm walking in what he's called me to be, a new creation, a son of God, that I can be strong and I can stand in the power of his might. I don't have to be weak and cowardly. In fact, if any be here weak today, I hope that you feel that God has now set you free, that he has challenged you to let go of your weakness. Because it's in your weakness he's made strong. He says, be strong in the Lord. And today we're here to be strong as fathers. We're here to be a light and example to this world, praise God. He says, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what? Standing for God requires due diligence to take what he has given you and apply it. Amen. If you don't put your armor on, you are as weak and vulnerable as you can be, because the enemy surely is out there to take your life. He's surely out there to take your influence. He's surely out there to destroy your image before your children that you wouldn't be the father you desire to be. Amen. Amen. Take no mistake. Make no mistake about it. Many of us have found those shoes and walked that path. And we know today is a day of escape. That God is giving us a chance to run again after him and not be found tripped up. Losing my identity and my image to be able to be a man of God that represents our Heavenly Father. Today I stand strong and I put on my armor that when that devil comes, he ain't got nothing in me. Amen. Amen. He can't get in me because I've put on my armor and I thank God. Paul begins to list it. Amen. He begins to list the things that you should consider. Have you applied yourself in? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You don't want to think there's an enemy out there? Just look at all the death and murder. Amen. Look at all the genocide. People killing off peoples because they don't want other peoples living in their villages. You ought to be thankful you live in America. We're a melting pot. Other countries, you don't look the same, they're going to kill you. It goes on all the time. Just listen to the news. This world is a very sombering place. Amen. It needs the love of God. It needs fathers. They can pass on his values Amen. to their children. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. What does that mean to stand? It means to live and pass on. That's what it means to stand. To live and pass on. And so today, I've challenged us as fathers to be strong that we might live and pass on. Amen. 
to another generation. You say, well, maybe my children have grown. That's okay. There's still more spiritual children to be had. That's right. There's still more people out there that are lost in the darkness that don't have a clue what's happening. They can't understand why divorces are so common. They can't understand why child, children are so disrespectful. They don't understand why the world's broken down and we just want to accept it. Oh, that's just the way it is. No, I tell you today, there's an answer in Christ. And the answer is to turn your heart to God and repent. Amen. Accept him as your heavenly father and his love. Let him pour his values into you, and you will find your life truly will change. Amen. Thank you. You too can become a son of God because you aren't what you should be until you cross that bridge with him. That's right. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. I don't know where I'd be without Christ. I'm sure I would not have been the father I ended up being. Amen. Amen. But I'm thankful Amen. because I had the courage to take a stand. And to be the father that he called me to be. To love him with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul and all my strength. That I can stand here today Amen. with my children and my wife. And I can love God. And I can thank him that he has been a faithful God. He has not let me down. He'll never let you down. Amen. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. And he says he wants us to, to gird about our loins which speaks of reproduction, to gird them with truth, to know God's standards, to realize God's perfect intentions, and to pass that along. He wants us to reproduce his values to another generation. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So stand today in the power of the Lord, having your loins girt with truth, ready to pass and reproduce the values that God has given us. And he says, to have the breastplate of righteousness. You know, the breastplate is the insignia. It is where your identity is displayed for the world to see. Amen. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Why? Because I am a son of God. And I will wear the breastplate of righteousness, of right living, which doesn't have to take on a specific symbol, the cross, the dove, you know, whatever you might want to use. It just takes on the symbol of it's a life that can't be denied. It does what's right. It does no evil. It bears long. It suffers long. Amen. It allows itself to, to be able to show love at all costs. 1 Corinthians 13, read the chapter. It'll change your life. That's the breastplate, walking in his love, taking on his image. Now people, when they look at you, they see him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And he says this, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I was liking this to a message that God spoke with us last week. Able to minister everywhere you go. God has been speaking to us that we are able ministers. Amen. Not just able ministers, but responsible. Able to respond. When you see somebody that needs hope, you see somebody that needs help, you have the ability. We are able ministers of the New Testament. We have the ability to share the news, the good news, that makes the heart glad, Luke 4, 18. Amen? Yes. Isn't God so faithful to continue to build He's been building into our lives the values and the ability to share those values. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But you have to apply yourself. You have to put on that armor. If you don't put it on, you're going to find yourself being taken back down and losing focus and trying to stand again. Thank God for all the strong men and women I got in this church Amen. that just refuse to serve their flesh and to say, you know what, it's for me and my family. We shall serve the Lord. Amen. And in that, they find the strength to stand in the midst of all the pressures and all the things that this life throws at us to try to take us out. God's grace is more powerful. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Jesus. That just encourages my heart. I'm still here. Thank you, Jesus. That means God is able. <laughs> that just excites me. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Verse 16 says, Above all, Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. We know what a shield is. It goes before us. It goes between us. It's what stands between me 
and this present darkness. Amen. The shield of faith is my complete trust in God Almighty. Amen. I was reading out of the Proverbs. He says, them that trust him with all their heart, he is a buckler, he is a shield. Amen. I just love how God is continually trying to show us the way. Show us what the armor is. And I put all my faith and all my trust in him. When things look like they're falling down on the job, when things look like they're going you know, awry in my family, I put my faith in the Lord. And he's between me and the problem. Amen. And I'll tell you what, he doesn't let through what shouldn't come through. Those fiery darts, those accusations, those things that would come to rob me of my identity and my image, they can't penetrate through to my heart. They can't come in and tarnish the, blush, the brush plate of righteousness. They can't come in and affect who my image and my identity is. We are so secure in God. But you have to put him, put your trust in him, and allow him to be your shield. Amen. Let him stand between you and this world. Because I'll tell you what, when you breathe your last, you better hope you had your shield Amen. there. Because it's all over then. Amen. You're going to find out what this reality was all about. You're not going to just be standing before God, but you're also going to see every spiritual darkness that was ever out there. You're going to, why? Because you're going to transition from a realm of the physical realm to the spiritual realm. As soon as you hit the spiritual realm, you see everything that's in the spiritual realm. Amen. Paul just told us what we're fighting against. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're like fighting against a spiritual uh, war, a, a spiritual dynamic that's designed to try to keep us from recognizing there's a spiritual life and then dying in our sins. That's all it's all about, the enemy. He thinks he's so slick. Amen. He ain't got nothing over on me, man. Now I know that's the cry of your heart. He ain't got nothing over on you. Amen. I see it for what it is. Praise God. And I can only say that because God has opened my eyes. Amen. You know, when you begin to receive him and his love, he will open your eyes. So if you have not saw that yet, I encourage you to receive his love, to receive his example, his standards. He'll begin to show you all kinds of stuff. I remember when I was probably about uh, just a couple years old in the Lord, just serving the Lord for a couple years, and he opened my eyes. I saw spiritual wickedness for the first time. You know, he gave me a vision. I was like, it blew my mind. I'm not a vision person. I never had vision. Probably one of the only visions I ever had. But all of a sudden, I saw this world and all the darkness that was in this world and how it was trying to attack people and get people. I was like, I never saw that before. I was like, Wow. When my eyes were finally opened, I saw how the enemy works. It's everywhere. It's through movies. It's through TV. It's through anything. It's just through the way, the way people dress. There's spirits in them looking at you, wanting you to look at them and lust after them. Oh, it's just crazy. Yeah. You just, he just showed me. I was like, whoa. I saw the world for what it was, influenced by the enemy. I was like, wow. Never saw that before. Didn't take no man to preach that. But God, my faithful father, opened my eyes. And he can open your eyes, too. So praise the Lord, we take the shield of faith where we can quench, wherewith we'll be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And we take the helmet of salvation, not just the hope of salvation, but the helmet of salvation. And we, we, we apply it to our mind, understanding that what God has purchased cannot be repossessed. What God has purchased with his own blood, the devil cannot take back. And I stand today excited about that because my mind is completely covered by the fact and protected with the helmet that I am his. I have just one worry in my life. Just one, really. Am I pleasing to him or not? That's really the consuming passion of my life. Everything else takes its place underneath that thought there. <laughs> am I pleasing to you or not right now, Lord? Because if I'm not, i got a problem. I'm smart enough to know that. I think we all are. We need to allow our priorities to be set in such a way that God first, everything else next. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Because in that, you will find the ability to provide for your family. In that, you'll be able to find you have the, the example and the truths and the precepts to teach your children. In that, you'll find you'll be the light of the world. You have Amen. to prioritize him first. God Amen. seeks such worship in the spirit and the truth. He wants people that can leave this present reality and come into his presence in the spirit to be empowered to be able to represent him in a natural world. Praise God. That's why he says they'll see your, uh, Matthew chapter 5 says they'll see your good works. Let me just paraphrase that. They'll see your activity. They'll see your actions. They'll see your living. The light that's in you is the radiance of Christ's life. What you do, what you say, how you carry yourself. They'll see that and then what he's saying, what happened? Oh, you're such a great person. No, he didn't say that, did he? He says, they'll glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. You make it known the reality of our Heavenly Father right here in the natural world. Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited about that. Amen. Lastly, he says, 
second glance it doesn't mean. Taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. What do you do with the Word of God? I could speak all day about the Word of God, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> word that will not come back void will not come back not accomplishing that which it's been purposed to do it will not come back unfulfilled because he promises and he is faithful that promised Amen. Amen. you take the word of God and you apply it verse 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit which is our testimony I was reminded of being an overcomer 12 and 1 we overcome this world we overcome the enemy by what the blood of the Lamb, and the word of our testimony. Praying always <laughs> with all prayer, supplication of the Spirit. Praying what? Praying the word, praying the truth, praying his precepts, praying his standards, allowing people to see who he is. Amen. Amen. For he is faithful, that promise. And watch there unto you. Be sober, be awake, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Don't allow yourself to be overcome by this world. Don't get distracted by its darkness. Yeah, there's a lot of toys. There's a lot of things we can all get involved with. But you know what? It's just not but a distraction. Has God said you can't have fun? No. God forbid. But it does not ever replace the priority of God first. That's what he said. Amen. You will have no other idol before me. Amen. And guess what? He said, if you seek me first in my kingdom, he says, I'll add all things to you. He'll let it come into your hands. He'll let you release it. He'll let you find his heart in the middle of having it. And it's like, you know, you just need to experience him. The only way you can experience him is put him first in all things. Amen. He said, I'll add all things to you then. I know what it's all about. And I know, like what Paul was saying, I know how to live, you know, it, 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 humble, you know, and based. I know how to live good. You know, I, I, I've experienced all these dynamics. God is so good. He's so good. He allows us to experience that. Why? So we can relate. As we relate now, we can give what the only thing we can give. And that is our Father. <laughs> the only thing I have to give you today is my Father. Amen. And my thankfulness for Him. So today in closing, I just want to reiterate. Today in most families, fathers are our special unsung heroes. They rarely ever get their fair share of adulation or praise that they deserve. They work endlessly to fulfill the task of providing for their families, loving their wives, and training up their children. So to all the fathers that have answered God's call, his highest call for their lives, we salute you. Happy Father's Day.